I decided to build the base out of 2x4s and cover with a quarter inch plywood. I built nine legs out of two 2x4s that I glued together to make 4x4s then cut those into 12 inch lengths. Then I screwed 2x4s into three sets of the legs to create a base for the platform and frame. I attached the remaining three legs in the center of those. I set up each of the three sections in the room where I wanted them to sit, then joined them with 2x4s and attached quarter inch stained plywood, creating a box for the platform to sit on. I made the support box this way because it isn't really seen, but if I were to build this bed again, I'd make it using 2x12s. I wanted the frame to be 2x12 with mitered corners. This was a lot more difficult than I thought. 2x12 by 8 foot boards are very heavy and cutting a mitered corner was really tough. I wanted to quit woodworking that day altogether. As I was assembling, I decided to put in a little contrasting accent strip in the joint. I drew up pocket holes to attach the mitered frame boards. Attaching two sheets of three quarter inch plywood screwed into the base legs gave the support I needed for the 2x12 platform ledge. At the headboard end of the platform, I used a 2x6 to square the frame, leaving a section of board where I could put a cutout for power strips to plug in behind the headboard. I laid in 2x4s to support the mattress. Phase 1 done. For the headboard, I wanted wood panels all the way across, but with a section in the middle as wide as the mattress, which would have a slanted back for sitting up in bed. I also wanted to have a hidden cupboard to plug in cell phones and uh, uh, keep other things out of sight. I started by cutting three each two by sixes, the height I wanted. I measured straight up 15 inches, which is an inch taller than the mattress. Then from that 15 inch mark, I drew and cut freehand a line diagonally to the corner. I then glued and clamped two by fours centered to the back side. This created a lip to attach the side sections later. With everything laid out on the floor, I attached one by four and one by 10 boards across the front. The one by 10 board to be the sliding door. I cut a 45 degree angle on both sides of the 1x10s and the matching side of the 1x4s. This made a groove for the door to slide. I cut strips of 1x4 to hold a shelf and to support the sliding door. I built two side pieces with 2x12x15 inch shelf tables to join up to the center section. I also added some thin trim cut from 1x4s. I cut the trim with a hacksaw where the sliding cupboard door would open. Then I stained everything, let everything dry for about 24 hours and put on a top clear coat. I added a wide strip of 1 quarter inch plywood to the back so the cupboard would have a backing. The straight pieces were easy to attach with a nail gun. Then I used a scroll saw, that was a gift from my son, to cut the pieces to go around the shelf table and bed platform. Next, I took a 10 foot one by four for the top rail and a second one cut in half lengthways to create an L shape, then routed a groove along the back edge for an LED strip light. I drew the hole in the top board, pulled the LED strip light through and screwed the top into the 2x4 posts and set the light strip in the groove with double sided tape. I attached and installed the bracket hooks, pulleys, Edison bulbs and light cages. The light switches for the side lights and the LED accent lighting are located in the headboard so they are easy to access while in bed. It's difficult to capture what the blue light really looks like. It's not as white as it looks in the picture. Instead, add, it adds a cool blue uplight on the wall. Hope you enjoyed seeing the creation process for this bed as much as I enjoyed making it. If you would like more details, let me know. I haven't been too good remembering to photograph, so there are missing steps photographically. Until next time, cheers, y'all.